Hey friend, if you have heard about hexagonal architecture, also known as ports and adapters, or either if you never heard about it, this video is for you. We'll go through hexagonal architecture, we'll see what it's about, and if you stay till the end, we will see how this idea is in impacting other things that maybe you are using nowadays, like clean architecture or onion architecture. So let's take a look. Before we start talking about hexagonal architecture, it's important to understand which problems we will address with hexagonal architecture. What's the reason, the why for hexagonal architecture? And if you have ever worked with a three-layered system, you know there are a lot of problems that can come from the coupling that you create in your application. It becomes really difficult to test and sometimes really difficult to maintain and evolve the application. So, for example, if you have something like you have a, pr a presentation layer, a logic layer or business logic layer and a data application layer, usually you will see that your logic, the most important part of your application, will be highly dependent on the data application layer. And that causes a lot of problems. For example, Alistair, when he came up with the idea of hexagonal architecture, he was involved on the project where they have a team building a relational mapper. They were building that relational mapper. They realized there was a major flaw on, on the design. So they realized they needed to rebuild that. So they told everyone on the other teams, just take some time off and get back in two or three weeks. And Alistair starts asking them, why can't you give us something that we can loop back and we will test our logic against a fake thing. We will create a memory representation of the data that we need. And nowadays, this may look really strange, this kind of question being so hard to do, but at the time, it was not usual to think of, about that. So if you have ever worked in something like this, where you have your logic and here's some infrastructure uh, concern, you know that it's common to be really hard to test this logic because it depends on the infrastructure. To change the infrastructure technology that you are using, for example, you are using a SQL database and now you need to move to Cosmos DB or something like that because you need to scale. You will see that sometimes you will face a lot of challenges that you were not expecting at the first time. So Alistair came up with the idea of hexagonal architecture based on that. It was based on those goals that Alistair came up with the idea of the hexagonal architecture. And if you are asking yourself why an hexagon, there's a simple explanation to that. Basically, Alistair wanted a, a shape that could be different from the ones that you usually use. And as you know, when you start drawing an architecture, usually you use a lot of boxes. So we used the hexagon because it basically was looking for something that was not that commonly used. One of the most important things that Alistair realizes, and it may look really simple, but it's really powerful, is that every single application has an internal side and an external side. If you think about it, all the applications have a reason to be, okay? So they do something and maybe something special. But that thing that they do, the goal that they are fulfilling, doesn't live alone in the vacuum. You need to connect that thing to the outside world somehow. You need to either send instructions from the outside world into that application, or that application needs to produce something that will impact the outside world. When you start defining things in, in this form, where you have an internal and external, you know one thing. You know that you control everything that is inside of this hexagon, and you know that the outside world is messy. There's a lot of things going on here. Those things outside can change. Those things outside you don't control, but you need a way to reach those things. To this idea, what we say is that inside of this hexagon, we have basically our core application. Everything that is special about this application is inside of this hexagon, okay? I usually name this thing as, as core. So if you're asking yourself, is this a project in 
my solution, what this thing is. It depends because hexagonal architecture doesn't tell you that you should have one project, two projects, 20 projects, whatever. If you want to practice DDD in your application, yeah, your domain, your application will go inside of your core. Maybe you have two projects. If not, one project may be enough. As I told you, you know that this core application is doing important things, but those things need to be invoked by the outside world. You need to trigger those things likely. What you will need is a way to standardize and protect your inside from the messy world that is outside. So how do you do that? So Alistair came up with an idea that is the idea of ports. This box will be a port in our design. What is a port? A port is basically a contract with the outside world where you say, for example, what do you expect? What do you provide? How can you interact with the core application? In simple terms for a .NET developer, a port may be an interface and a data transfer object, a DTO. You will create, for example, an interface and then you can use, for example, classes for the DTOs or if you are using the latest versions of .NET, I would recommend you to use a record, for example. And what this port will be doing? So what we know is that we need to trigger something inside of this application. And what will be triggered at will be something that in hexagonal architecture is named an adapter. And let's say that you need an API to connect to that thing. So one way to, to connect with your hexagon is through an API. So you can have here an adapter that will tell you how to translate, for example, HTTP requests into what that port is expecting. So you have, for example, here a REST API, you have your controllers, your controller receives the request, and then it will know an interface that will receive by injection and will call a given method, providing the, the arguments, and some of them may be a DTO from that port. Okay, just that. By knowing that, you gain the advantage that you easily, if you want to swap or having multiple ways to interact with the application, you can easily have a different adapter, for example, to do exactly the same through, let's say, a, a CLI or through Blazor. To these kind of adapters, we, we call them primary or driving adapters. Why? Because adapters that come from the outside uh, invoking something inside of your core application we, we used to name that that way. So if I design here a line and down here as well, what I can tell you is that everything that is outside of this core application on the left will be what we call in hexagonal architecture um, primary or driving adapter, okay? So, and on the other side, what we have on the right side is the other type of adapters. And what those adapters are, are basically secondary or driven adapters. And as you can see, there's a problem with hexagonal architecture that is you usually have two names to the same thing, the same way that people know it by uh, hexagonal or ports and adapters. Here, we also have two names to the same thing, primary or driving and secondary or driven. I would prefer to only use one of them. So pick your and, and stay with it. On this side, you will also have the same thing. You will have adapters, a port to connect to those adapters. A port on the secondary or driven side is exactly the same, an interface, DTOs, and you have your adapters. And let's say that what you want to do is that after your core application doing something, you want to, for example, send a notification, send a message, whatever. And let's say that you have start that using something like RabbitMQ, for example, okay? You will have Rabbit, an adapter to Rabbit here. 
every time that core application does something, it doesn't know that it needs to connect with Rabbit. It basically knows that there's a port to the outside world that will send a message. And now you have connected there a RabbitMQ uh, adapter. So this adapter will receive something from the port, will translate it to the protocol to, or to the delivery mechanism of RabbitMQ and send it. Now let's say that you need to, to scale this thing and you find out that would be better if you are using, let's say, Kafka, or just because you like the name. Now we have here also a Kafka adapter. And you want to swap it, you can do it because you are basically fulfilling the same port, but now to a different technology. So you can send your RabbitMQ away and having your Kafka here and everything keeps working as fine. And you don't need to touch your core application. That is the most important part of your application. This is may look really simple, but it, but is really important. This idea. Now that you start thinking about it, what happened is that our API will know that there's a core application, and it will have a reference to an interface of of that core application through a port. And he knows that he can cause that uh, that port. This core application will know that there's an interface to the outside world to send messages. That interface will be another port. So when you call this interface here, it will be doing something inside, and then it just says to the interface, send that message. As you can imagine, you will be doing this thing through uh, dependency injection for sure. So it's important to, to know that while I'm using here this example with one primary adapter and one secondary adapter, there's nothing in hexagonal architecture that tells you that you can only have one adapter, you can have multiple ones. For example, if we, besides Kafka, you also need SQL. And that thing can be SQL, you can swap it with a uh, file system, whatever, okay? You just plug in the things that you need. Each of those adapters that we have now here, they don't know each other, is one of the ideas of hexagonal architecture. Why? Because if you have your file adapter, depending directly on the Kafka one, that will cause you problems in the future, the type of problems that hexagonal is trying to avoid you. So if you have the explicit dependency on the day that you need to swap the Kafka one, you will have a problem, okay? You, you can see that. If you remember, in the beginning of the video, I told you that one of the goals of hexagonal architecture is not only this device independence through adapters, but also being able to test your application in isolation. And this approach will fulfill that because now the same way that I have, for example, here, one adapter to an API, one adapter uh, using Blazor, whatever, I can have also here an adapter specific for testing. So there's even one expression that I really like by Alistair that is, is a kind of a rule where he says that one port, two adapters, or basically trying to translate, if you have one port, you should have at least two adapters, one for testing, one that is basically the implementation to the delivery mechanism that you want. And obviously you can have multiple adapters to, to the real implementation, but at least for testing, you should have one. So now that I have this, I, I have the power of having a, here a test adapter that will call the methods here, test my logic. And since these ports on this side are interfaces, I can easily mock them. I can plug in a different adapter that will be, for example, an, any memory store. For example, let's say that here um, on the file one, I don't want to store to the file system. I want to store to memory. So I could do something like when I'm testing, I will set up my 
core application and saying that, okay, my interface will be using fake data that are on the memory store. Something like that, that, that is possible and, and a really cool thing of hexagonal architecture. Hexagonal architecture is basically this, is really simple, is a simple concept, but really powerful. If you have been using clean architecture, onion architecture, you should know that in the reality, they are heavily inspired on hexagonal architecture. You can take a look on the original blog posts on both and you will find there the reference to hexagonal architecture. And if you know them, you know that both have the goal of device independence and then do that using the same rules as the hexagonal where you have the dependencies always pointing inwards that will allow you to have that device independence. If you want to experiment using hexagonal architecture or if you are using clean architecture or onion, it's also important to know this thing because if this thing is on the basis of clean and onion, you should always try to understand the fundamentals and the principles behind the things that you use. And only when you realize the reasons for hexagonal and how simple it is, you will see the potential that you have and will not apply, for example, clean architecture on things that don't need it. Okay, so keep this as another tool on your toolbox and I bet that you will like it. If you have any other question regarding hexagonal architecture, if there's any kind of video that you want to see me approaching hexagonal architecture in practice, just let me know, leave a comment down below, and I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, just keep things simple.